Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. This uh, Today for our first session, we had uh, Dr. Alberto Miscelli scheduled. Unfortunately, due to electrical and as well as internet problems, he was not able to come live. However, he sends us a message that I will play for you shortly uh, before we play the video of his 2018 Global Summit attendance and uh, lecture that you may enjoy. You guys wanted the umbrella concept, we're still bringing it to you, but in a little bit of a different uh, way. But quickly to give you guys an introduction on Dr. Alberto Maselli Pavarotti, he completed his undergraduate studies at the School of Dentistry at Universidad Central de Venezuela, Caracas, where he also received his DMD. Dr. Maselli later received a certificate of fellowship in basic or oral habilitation from the University of Michigan School of Dental Medicine in Ann Arbor. He received an implant training at uh, the Bicon Institute in Boston and at the Ni Neo Biotech Institute in Seoul, Korea. Dr. Maselli is a frequent speaker in continuing education and use of prosthetics and dental implants and has a visiting and guest professorship as well as lecture at the dental schools and universities throughout South America. Uh, we really enjoyed his presentation and uh, the, the system has not changed uh, for uh, the umbrella concepts and the biology, but uh, let's go ahead and hear what Dr. Maselli has to say on this topic. Hello friends, this is Alberto Hello, friends. Miscelli from this is Alberto Venezuela. Miscelli from Caracas, Speaking. Venezuela. Speaking. Welcome to the 2020 Welcome to the 2020 Global Dental Interdisciplinary, Global Dental Interdisciplinary Summit. Dental Interdisciplinary I couldn't not join you today, I couldn't not join due, you to today due to internet and electricity in my country. However, we will now play you the video of the 2018 Global Implantology Summit in Los Angeles, California. The biology has not changed. The umbrella technique hasn't changed either. I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you in the 2022 Global Summit Thank you very much. Appreciate. Stay home, please. Maselli is going to be speaking to us uh, on um, the famous umbrella concept and soft tissue engineering and uh, your uh, marginal uh, emergence and profile. And uh, welcome from Venezuela, Dr. Alberto Miscelli. Thank you again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, for, for me, it's very pleasure to be here. And uh, my topic is umbrella concept. It's not a new concept, but you, you see the, the presentation. Then after we finish, you understand all what it means. Hello? Well, I am from Venezuela, and uh, Ana Luisa Bernotti and me, we work together to try to find the best of, for our patients. Uh, we are from a beautiful country with many places, very beautiful. I don't want to talk about politics. I just say that you are invited to Venezuela to meet all these good places. And our heart is here with all together. Okay. Perimplantitis is a disease created for us, for us dentists. It become a pandemic disease, which invade all all our office all days. It involves our patient uh, from us, our, our our clinic or our the neighbor clinic, the dentist, uh, uh, another professional. We must aware from this problem. Almost a million implants are placed in, per year in, in the United States and in Europe. It is estimated that 30% of the patients 
can be suffered per implant practice in a short time. But what this this case has as in common? We want to explain what happened. Is only biology? Is infection or inflammation? Okay, patient asks us for teeth, only for teeth. They don't want to know about implant, is it titanium or is it a, a PRF or is it a, a desilicate or something. They want uh, aesthetic function and health. They have a access a, a, to excellent material. We have a, a, a access to a, excellent, sorry. We have access to excellent material because dental technician, we achieved an illusion of creating a tooth of our clothes of natural. The pink frame, the soft tissue around the crown must be aesthetic acceptable. Excuse me? Okay, the crown of the implant is an, is an optical illusion without a lot of biology beneath it. It's a just illusion. The pink area is the key. The duodenum is the key. Then, what is umbrella concept? Is a new concept? After many re uh, years of revisation of literature about bone loss around implants and how to prevent preimplantitis, I, I create a term umbrella concept. is isn't a novel is an, isn't a novel concept. It just uh, understand the different point of view and put all together under the umbrella. Then, sorry. Okay. Is the conjunction of concept that exists in the literature about the handling of soft tissue and hard tissue around the implant, applicable three-dimensionally, preserving the crystal bone, the mucosa architecture, and the aesthetic around the implant processes complex through time. But if you want to explain this topic in one hour, I'm going to explain immediately. But if you want to resume in 20 minutes, I need one month to prepare my lecture. Because uh, this uh, concept, there is many things around the implant complex, the crown implant complex. We need to consider an evaluation of the different topics from gingiva, biotype, architecture, papilla, and biological width. Then we see the bone, the quality, the quantity, the vocal crystal bone, and the proximal crystal bone. But we need to start from the last, from the, from the, uh, not from the beginning. We need to know how is they going to be the shape of the crown, how the volume of the crown, and what is the color. But the, the key is the zenith. The natural seal that develop around the boat, around boat, protecting the available bone for infection and disease is known as biological width. This biological width is uh, about three millimeters from the puppet, from the, the margin, gingiva margin to the crystal bone. We need to respect this when we decide to place an implant. The vertical and horizontal uh, soft tissue thickness and the 3D implant position could be could promote a bone restoration, a bone remodelation, or bone stabilization. It depends where the implant is going to be. The blood supply is the key. In the tooth, when we have the PDL, we have more uh, blood supplies from the PDL to the crystal bone. But when we lost the tooth, 
we lost the, uh, the, uh, the blood supply from the PDL. Then we need to know how can regenerate the, the, the blood supplies. When the implant replaces the teeth, a new biological with developed after conventional two-stage implant to abutment are placed. The blood supply is reduced. In this case, we can see with a periodontitis in the 20, uh, 2007, we, uh, we changed the platform switching and after seven years, we gain bone around the implant. Why? What happened there? We stabilized the soft tissue around the abutment and the platform switching. Then the, the, the bone received more blood supplies and recreate bone high up, uh, around the, soft, the implant surface. You can see in, in this uh, image how the bone grow after the platform switching. That's why the platform switching work. It's one of the key. In this case, in a, in a posterior area, we find a, a mucosa thickness less than three millimeters. But if we have three millimeters, the implant can be placed at the bone level, right? But we need to consider something else. What we are going to do? Crown over the implant. And we need to know where is going to be the zenith of the future crown. Then, where is the CEJ of the neighbor tooth? Where is the crestal bone of the neighbor tooth? And we, are, we need to know where is going to be the, the future zenith of the crown. If we design the, the, a tooth or teeth, we, we see where is going to be the zenith of the crown. Then the implant is going to be three or four millimeters beneath to create more soft tissue around the abutment. The mucogingival junction and the, the gingiva margin create a, a, a band of soft, of soft tissue, very important. This is a, a dual zone. In these cases, in 2013, the patient has a root fracture. We need to, sorry, we need to extract and decide if a, a socket regeneration or, or immediate implant lo loading. In Joseph can create this, uh, this classification to know how much bone we have in front of the roots or in, in, the, in the palatal. We have four uh, class classification. And what do you think that is the, the more common in our, in our passion? Number one, class one, and class four is about more than 80% of the patient. Then we need to know how is our going to be the, our approach to put an implant in these cases. Recently, uh, Gluckman and his group create a new classification with a five class depend of the class of bone and the position of the roots. Then, in this case, is a class one from King, class one and cl class three Glockman. We need to preserve the soft tissue and the hard tissue around the the, in the, the, so the socket on the socket. The position of the implant is very important, more palatal to create a a jumping gap to fill with a with a, a bone. Uh, graft. 
we can reproduce the soft tissue or the gingiva contour taking an impression in the, mid in, in the same day to create a model, create a transfer like a, a emergent profile, to create an emergent profile that the that tooth had. Okay. We transfer, we, we create a, a some uh, gingival uh, surgery to uh, create a, a better uh, architect, uh, gingival architecture. And then we have a model and create a provisional. The soft tissue heal around the, the provisional but the um, subcritical area is the more is more important than the 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 uh, over -criti the critical zone. You see, after five years, the soft tissue stay in in place and very healthy. Okay. The emergent profile for me is the most important in the uh, temporary abutment. We need to create a, a special design to create more space for tissue around the abutment. See this soft tissue? We maintain the volume in the, in the vocal, vocal phase and the shape of the gingiva. And for, we need to, to use a growth factor to create more soft tissue in the, uh, the, the chamber between the implant to the, the crown. This area is named a clot chamber. The clot chamber, the, the crown, create a, a stop between the, the bone and the crown. Then the PRF or uh, CTG is good for this area to promote this soft tissue. The papilla between implant is really papilla? or is a, a pseudo-papilla. Because in histology, the, the papilla between the teeth are, have, has had uh, many, many fibers, many, many, many uh, collagen fibers. In the, in the implant, we have only two kind of uh, fiber. Horizontal, uh, vertical, sorry, and circumferential. Then, we need to create a papilla with a coal, like a tooth, to create a, a aesthetic, gingiva aesthetic. In this three article, up, up here, explain the direction of the collagen fiber and the capacity of the touch of, to the abutment implant complex. Nevins, in the 2010, explained the modification of the surface of the abutment with a, a special uh, groove, create a um, attachment of the perpendicular fibers. Meanwhile, at the, sa the same navy and Rodriguez from Spain in 2016 explained the switching platform helps to stabilize the fibers, the circumferential fibers around the abutment. Schubert in 2017 said the fiber attached to the surface of the abutment aren't functionally oriented. The stability of the mucosa is mainly based of the, on, on the circumferential fibers, more than horizontal fibers. Then, the one abutment, one time technique maybe is a solution because we preserve 
the the collagen fiber organized over the platform switching of the implant. We don't need to take out the abutment again. We take an impression to the abutment and preserve this uh, stability of the tissue. Ivanovsky and Lee in 2017 say the disturbance of the soft tissue interface caused by the progress of repeated abutment removal resulted in a more apical reposition of the connective tissue zone. That's why we try to preserve the soft tissue in the same time of the structure and the implant placement. It plays the abutment and plays the, 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 the temporary crown. If you don't want to pay the, pay, uh, place the temporary crown, we can create a individualized abutment healing with this emergent profile. The companies create a healing abutment with a, a round shape, conical shape, but the tooth doesn't have the, the, this uh, conical shape. The, of each tooth has a different shape of the emergent profile. Then, to find this uh, kind of uh, emergent profile or the, so the soft tissue healing, we need to create a special healing about. But we need to know what happened or what, what are in, the, in this area. There are three areas, and Milko Viorwell explained very well, that has two, two areas, one support area and one condition area. I prefer to, to, in, to put a, a transitional area because in this area, the epithelium begins to grow. More cells in this area. Then, if we reduce the volume of the emergent profile of the crown, we can create more soft tissue space and more, uh, more vessels and more uh, uh, circumferential collagen fiber, type 1. That this is the support area, the connective tissue area, and the transitional area. With the, in the last, we have the conditional area to create the, the final shape of the gingiva, to create the aesthetic, uh, fi the final aesthetic for the crown and the gingiva. Then, uh -huh. okay. What happened in this uh, transitional zone? We have more vessels, more epithelium cells to protect the crystal bone. If we don't have spaces, we maybe we don't have many a lot of uh, blood supplies, and the crystal bone go go back. Okay. In this study of uh, Rodriguez Suriana in Spain, they show that we, they found many, many circumferential uh, fibers around the abutment near the platform switching. In this picture, uh, this company show uh, an abutment, conical abutment, to, pro to prevent the, the, the continued connection and disconnection. The crown is going to be uh, two millimeters from the platform switching to promote the stabilization of the fibers. Then these two millimeters is one of the key. The other millimeters is the sulcus because we need a aesthetic crown grow from the gingiva. In this row, we saw the this area, the gray area, is the uh, support area, only no ceramic, no uh, 
zirconia, only titanium, machine titanium, and we have a, a two millimeters of soft tissue around the, this area to protect the invasion of bacteria and to promote more blood supplies around the, the over the crystal bone. This is uh, the last area. This area is the conditioner area to create the final gingival architecture. And this area is remodeling the gingival shape without excessive pressure. Then we need to transfer this information for the laboratory. We need to use the, uh, a, a very uh, slim transfer to reproduce the emergent profile. Then you use the, the temporary, uh, the temporary uh, crown, and we have a, a tray, uh, traces of the cyst tissue, the, 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 the emergent profile, and with the flow resin, we create a, a individualized transfer. Then, is, is zero bone loss possibility when placing implant? Thomas uh, Linkenwissel said yes, and I said yes too. But we need to know how much soft tissue we have. We, if we have one millimeter of soft tissue and the implant is bone level, you are going to lose bone. This is the fertility. Then we need to create a individualized abutment with the shoulder up very, very close to the gingiva to don't, don't uh, invade the, the, the soft tissue. And we can cement crown. And the, the, the cement crown is very, very easy to take, to, to, to take out. What happened with the heart tissue? We have eight cases, different uh, implant position. Crestal bone, one millimeter, subcrestal, two millimeters, three millimeters. Then with the one millimeter soft tissue or two millimeters soft tissue. Which implant goes into the bone? Number one, yes. Number two, yes. Number three, no. Number four, no. Here. Number five, maybe. Six, no. Seven, no. Eight, no. What does it mean? That if I have one millimeter of tissue, we need to place the implant subcrestal to create three millimeters for a f future biological width. This is, this is a sauserization. In these two x-rays are 10 years difference. Uh, the implant was a uh, subcrestal uh, so plate, place, and you can, you can see how the bone creates a new shape, but the implant is into the bone. Okay? And we create the biological width around the crown. In this little video, we can see the implant. Uh, bone level with three, three, four different uh, uh, mucosa high, and you can see how the bone remodeling in these different cases. And in the first case, we are going to the periplantitis because it's low. Okay, how can we can? Uh, uh, promote the, the crystal bone 
grow over the implant. It's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. In other case, if I have one millimeter, two millimeter, or four, uh, four millimeter uh, mucosa high, and the implant is subcrestal, we see the, the remodelation appear. But the implant is going to be under the tongue. No implant surface exposed to the, 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 the connective tissue. That's why uh, we are going to uh, place the implant subcrestally. But this is the reason. We need to use an implant with a, a, a stable connection, as a conical connection or conomorph connection. John Lindell says that the periodontitis, the problem is always in the soft tissue. The inflammation, in this case, occurs in the soft tissue, and the bone tissue disappear as a result. That's why the periodontitis is an inflammatory disease. What, what happened in the cases? Uh huh. This one. Ah, then before. Okay. 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 I'm going to uh, explain later these cases. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then the emergent profile. We need to create a special emergent profile with a, the, the temporary crown or with a healing abutment. And I found a, a system very easy to create this uh, individual profile. To create profile with a temporary abutment, especially with a peak, if the company has the, the peak. And the bioengineering for a emergent profile create more space for a, a aesthetic profile. We create more, more biological width with a special emergent profile with this kit. In this case, with this, this system, we create in one week a emergent profile and the healing is going to be like this one. The papilla with the, the, the um, dynamic compression technique, we create more a beautiful papilla with a, a lot of uh, epithelial cells between. What happened with the, the black triangle, as uh, Ana Luisa Bernot explained? We need to push the soft tissue if we have soft tissue. With the, the, the healing abutment or with a temporary, we can push the soft tissue, creating a, a, a temporary crown in a model, modify the emergent profile, and we can uh, produce a beautiful papilla between the implant and tooth. In this article, Stegman and Monge explain what happened, what, what you're going to do, depend of the implant site how is the emergent profile and what are you going to do? If the implant is palatal and the, com the, com the emergent profile is con convex uh, as shape because they want to push the soft tissue. In this draw, we can change the shape to create a concave shape but only the last millimeters. Create a emergent profile two millimeters with the abutment and one millimeter with the temporary crown of the and the cervical profile. In the molar is the same because the biology is the same. Then we can reduce the volume 
under the gum to create an emergent profile more biological. This molar has a different design under the, the gingiva to create more soft tissue, to push the soft tissue to, the, to create papilla and more uh, the shape on, in, the, in the buccal area more natural with the zenith at the same level that the other teeth. Okay, to take home message, I have only one message for you. First of all, the death of the implant isn't neg negotiable. The mucosa width is mandatory. But the zenith dec decides all. Then, we need to create a planning, a planning, prosthetic planning before to place an implant, before to use a, a knife to open the, the gingiva, before to drill the bone. We need to know where is going to be the zenith. And after that, we need to know where is going to the implant be and what kind of connection we need to use in this implant. If the implant is subcrestal, because we don't have any, uh, a lot of uh, soft tissue, we need to use a conical connection. The team is important, and uh, pink for me is my new obsession, not the, the ceramic. My technician is an is a, is amazing technician. He created a beautiful teeth, but the soft tissue for me is very, very important. Then, very, thank you very much. If you want to follow me in Facebook or on Instagram, just write my name. And if you want to uh, 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 any question, have a question. Write me to in, in the Facebook or in Instagram. I answer all the, the questions.